What is up? My share grid family, how are we doing? I haven't done this in a long time. I missed you. I've been busy. I've been shooting nonstop, uh, doing a lot of cool content for us. And I got so much to talk about right now. I'm so excited. The first thing I want to talk about today is night photography. What is it? How do you do it? What are some tips? Everyone's talking about this a7 III, Sony a7 III camera. It's a really good like kind of entry level camera into the Sony Alpha family. It's really popular right now. Everyone seems to be buying it and renting it out on ShareGrid. And so I wanted to, for the first time ever, do my own low light photography shoot, the Sony a7 III. Did I make mistakes? Yes. Did I learn? Sometimes, but I had fun. This is kind of weird. The lighting's not really right for this. I'm, I'm gonna make a change real quick, okay? This is much better. I like this. This feels right. This feels like night photography. So in our journey of night photography, we were looking for all sorts of lights, neon lights, storefront lights, uh, even fluorescent lighting has its own kind of appeal. First tip I wanna talk about is something about shutter speed. I've been doing cinematography and photography for quite a while. I've never heard of this rule and I think it's hilarious and it's kind of awesome at the same time because it's so simple. When you're doing photography, whether it even be night or day, but particularly low light night photography, you never want to use a shutter speed lower than the number that your millimeter is. So for example, if you're shooting with an 85 millimeter lens, you don't want to use a shutter speed lower than 1 85th. So I thought that was a pretty cool trick. I learned this on the internet, been doing this for a long time, never heard of that rule, but I think it's pretty sweet. The other cool thing about shutter speed at night is you can do those really long exposure shots. So sometimes you see that where it's at an intersection or over a street where you get those trilling lights of cars through the frame. That's pretty much a camera, most likely on a tripod, um, running a very long exposure. You can do anything from you know five seconds to all the way up to a couple minutes if you really wanna get a lot of craziness in your frame. And so we did this once, we went over an overpass and tested it out and we did a 30 second exposure, leaving streaks throughout our frame, which I thought was pretty cool. So of course, the slower the shutter speed, the more light you're allowing in. So even at night, even with a you know somewhat fast lens or, or relatively normal lens like we had, you're gonna bring in a tremendous amount of light at a 30 second uh, interval. So even if we stop down and we bring our ISO slightly down, um, we still needed to cut more light. So we actually had ND filters on hand and that can really be a quick, easy way to slap it on the front of your lens, really darken uh, the light coming in, which really allows you to slow down that shutter speed. But the most important thing about slow shutter, long exposure shots is you need a tripod. You can get creative. Sometimes I've put cameras on you know, railings or put it on the ground and use my wallet to kind of prop it up a little bit. As long as it's stationary and nothing's moving it or touching it or shaking it, you're good, but you need to tripod. We brought a really small, simple, cheap tripod. You can buy some that are as low as 12 to $25 that are these really simple kind of um, small tripods for photography and they do the job just fine. The best part is they're portable, they're light. You can put them in a backpack, throw it in the back of your car, whatever you gotta do and go. So this is my favorite thing to talk about. You gotta get creative, don't be scared, try new things. Like I said, I've never done night photography. I've never done a night photography shoot. I wanted to try something kind of new. This new technique is something a lot of people use. They use these things called prisms. You can buy them online, they're photography prisms that you can put in front of the lens and it kind of changes your image. It re reflects light in a, in a weird, crazy way and gives crazy reflections. I didn't have time to buy one. They look pretty awesome, but I went to my local art supply store and I got these. These, I think, are candle holders and they work wonders. Woo, it's okay. Durable, $8.74, that's all this costs. I thought I was gonna return these, I saved my receipt, but after seeing the results these gave, these are staying in my camera bag. So I'm not perfect. I cranked up my ISO at times, sometimes too much. You're doing a night shoot, sometimes you need to ride your ISO, and yes, I had noisy images. It sucks, it's a product of shooting with low light. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I got a couple photos that eh, were kind of too noisy. That's okay. If you use noise reducing tools, awesome. Keep doing that. 
if you don't want to or you don't like it, then there's another idea that I have that I've used for years. If you love the composition, if you love something about the photo, try changing it to black and white. What that does is it takes the noise that's chrominance noise, it's noise that's kind of multicolored, you see a lot of, a lot of those red and green and blue uh, pixels kind of firing off in your image, and it converts them to black and white, which now is a luminance noise. This looks a little bit more like film grain, which can be a lot more appealing to the eye. And it's a great way to save your photo if it's too noisy and it's just not working with any noise reduction tools. So for your picture profile, we use Picture Profile 2. It is known to be one of, if not the best picture profile for low light photography for the Sony a7 III. I'll give a shout out, my buddy Josh did a whole video about that. Link in the description below, check it out. He's got some really cool ideas and settings that he's tested out. It really brings out the most and maximizes the most out of your image in low light. So the last thing I wanna say is use your surroundings, look for light, look for neon light, crazy colored light. Um, that's what's gonna make your image pop. Of course your subject, the way you frame it, your camera, you, all of that matters, but your surroundings are really gonna help. I was looking for neon light, and guess what? I overexposed, I can't tell you how many times with the neon light, because it just, to the eye, it was hard to gauge um, how to expose that properly, because it's such a bright source. However, I shot in RAW. So it appeared overexposed. Once I looked at the raw image, all the information was there. So a lot of my neon lights I was able to recover, which was pretty awesome. So the key is here, guys, shoot raw if you can. It may take up a lot of data. A lot of times with night shoots, you are, no pun intended, shooting in the dark. You don't know. Even right there in the moment, it's hard to gauge, right? So when you're shooting raw, you're protecting your highlights, you're protecting your shadows. You've got a lot of information there to work with. Thank you for watching. Get out there tonight, any night, and start creating.